Hey there, everybody. This is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. Uh, coming back to you today, this is my, what I like to call, kicking the tires video. I wanted to show you guys what I got. Uh, some of you may be looking at uh, vintage sewing machines. You're thinking about getting one, but you're not sure. Or maybe you just did, and you're sitting in a closet somewhere, and you haven't gotten around to playing with it. I uh, thought I would show all of you some of the things. We're going to kind of do a little... Uh, you know inspection I'll have you guys come along with me and you'll see what's really great about the machine and some of the things that uh, are going to need some uh, tending to that's normal you almost never get a vintage sewing machine that's in perfect condition although it has happened to me once I went through the whole machine and certainly went through and gave it the full restoration and overhaul uh, but most of them need some amount of work and uh, Price does not always indicate how much you know work you have cut out for you, but uh, anyway, let's take a look. Uh, so this machine came with a table. It's out of the table right now because I'm I brought it into a space where I could get some nice light to make a, a, a video for you guys. Uh, when I debut this machine, I'll I'll show its table. It's a one of the wonderful Singer tables, I believe it's mahogany. So of course this is the. Uh, um, 1591 so it has the direct drive motor or the potted motor as we like to call it today and so there is no belt there's no dry rotted belt uh, I, I immediately noticed something that it was dry rotted let's come up and I'll give you guys a nice a nice close-up view of this this of course is my bobbin winder and the bobbin winding tire now remember, this is a late 40s machine, so <clears throat> this machine is already over 80 years old. It's entirely possible that this is not the original bobbin tire. Um, could be, but uh, it might not be. It could have been a replacement, and it's already dry rotted. You can see the cracks here, right? And I can tell it's it's fairly, you know, it's it's got some flexibility left to it. Um, if you're ever going to, to remove one of these tires, you can do it without the hand wheel off, but it'll make your job a lot easier, guys, if you do it without the, <clears throat> without the hand wheel on. But anyway, this is an easy fix. Probably the easiest thing you'll ever replace on a vintage sewing machine is this. Uh, as long as your bobbin winder uh, is freely moving, and this one is, spins beautifully. Uh, I press down, and you can hear the, the clicking. There, the spring uh, puts tension on it, and then you can see the the, the bobbin tire moving when the hand wheel moves. Uh, and then you come up, and uh, it's it's freed. So this is one of the, the bobbin uh, winding designs that Singer had. Let's come around to the front. Um, now this one, this machine has its original, well, I think it's the original, uh, spool pin up top. Sometimes they're missing, sometimes they're snapped off. Uh, there are ways to fix that, but we, we don't have that issue here. Um, let me zoom in and I'll show you. It's kind of interesting. The paint on this machine is actually not bad. I see some micro scratching down below. We'll look at it in a minute. But up here, the paint's in pretty good shape. There's a couple of nicks, but there's two right here. I have no idea uh, how or why the paint would be in pretty good shape. There's a little spot here where someone already did a touch-up, but they did a good job of it. But these two areas, uh, I might do a little touch-up here, um, but I don't I don't repaint machines typically. What else to say about the uh, top here? The, the decals are in pretty good condition. A little bit of wear here, but I'm not seeing any of the pin rash that can happen when, um, when, uh, when people have used uh, their machine arm as a pin cushion. So this all looks pretty good. I see something here. I don't know if that's a chip or something stuck on the finish yet. But overall, it's, it's okay. What's an, uh, something else to look at? Sometimes you will see on the front of the machine, you'll notice that sometimes a lot of the numbers our indicators are gone. They just worn away over time. But this, these are actually pretty legible. I'm impressed. Um, and this, 
moves freely. And again, when you're getting a machine for the first time, take your time. Be gentle. Don't try to force things because the machines are often not only are they dirty and dusty, but they're very dry. They haven't been lubricated forever, right? So you want to take this. This one is OK. It's going to need lubrication. But this, of course, is the adjustable. Uh, this little disc here moves freely. This was designed, by the way, so that you could turn the set screw and it would keep keep your uh, um, stitch lever, indicator lever in one position. I typically don't use this unless I'm sewing something very heavy that can actually cause the, the stitch length control to, to get out of uh, kilter. So we'll zoom back out for you guys. Let's take a look. So let's look down here at the bed. I see uh, one little nick spot here, a piece of paint chipped off. This is not unusual. Most of the front of this machine is actually looking pretty good. I see a little indentation here which tells me <clears throat> the original paint was chipped and someone touched it up. But again, they they used the right paint apparently and did a good job because I'm not a fan of poorly done touch-ups on, on paint jobs. Now I'm going to see if it'll pick up. I don't know if it will. But let's see. If you guys look closely, you'll see some very fine little hairline scratches. Not much. Let's see if I get flashlight and see if that'll bring them out for you guys. If I shine the flashlight, uh, take any dust off, you know, you'll see some very fine scratches. Here's a, oh, I just found a little, a little pit here in the paint. That's something I can also touch up as well. Keep in mind that these machines were used and people used pins when they were sewing. And it could be, uh, this could be from a pin, although you typically see that uh, more in the areas right where people were sewing because the pins were in the fabric to hold it in place while they sewed. Uh, this could also be, you know, someone's nails, <laughs> just their fingernails, you know, scratching it. But let's look at what we've got that's in wonderful shape. Look at the decals, right? I don't see any decal loss, no delamination. The paint's not peeling. Um, a lot of times where you see uh, decals um, begin to wear is right here in the front, right? Uh, but these have held up remarkably well. And what this tells me is that the clear coat on top of the black paint, uh, which would have been a, a lacquer or shellac uh, coating, has held up. Because remember, that's really what ultimately protects your decals. Um, so other than that, I, like I say, aesthetically, she looks pretty good. Now I'm going to turn the machine, see if I can do this without turning her. Uh, Turning everything upside down. Yes, it's heavy. Um, so let's take a look underneath. You see uh, <laughs> the incredibly high quality steel and iron that was that was uh, put into to to all of the vintage machines, and certainly the singers of the time. You see Samanco down here. Um, now here is something that you'll notice that it, it definitely did not exist on my 1904 Singer 15-30, right there. Um, and it, this would come in later. Singer started adding, for many of their machines, not all of them, um, uh, the ability to lower the feed dogs, right? And if I turn this one, it's stiff. I can't move it. I'm going to have to use heat and oil. That's normal. This was created so people could do basic embroidery, mostly for darning socks and holes in clothing. Uh, but uh, for many years, it was not used. In fact, of all the things I ever have to unstick on a vintage sewing machine, this is the most common. Um, but I do it because I don't know if the future owners will want to use it and they're getting a full overhaul and they should get it. So this, this functions. Um, and this, of course, if you look here, you will see Singer had, uh, at the time that this particular model was made, let's zoom in on the shuttle area. I haven't taken the bobbin case out, but um, we'll take a look. Sometimes, if they're not stored in nice places, they can be, um, they can be, uh, they can have some rust or oxidation, but I can't tell that that's the case. Now, uh, this is the bobbin case 
And if I take some scissors and cut the thread that's holding it, grab my scissors, so I'll cut the thread here. Now, <laughs> this is, uh, I, I haven't taken this out until just now. Uh, those of you who have a really good eye and know your bobbins will know that, well, it looks like a Singer 15 bobbin case, but the bobbin inside is not. And if we take it out, someone has put in a Singer Class 66 bobbin. And of course, the 66 bobbin is, this is used for your, your flat or your horizontal shuttle hooks. The Singer 66, from which it gets its name, the Singer 99, 185, the Singer 201, they all use the, uh, uh, many of us just call it the drop-in bobbin, but it's the Singer 66. This bobbin will not work in this bobbin case. So I don't know if the last person that got this machine uh, was trying to use it and didn't really know how to use it because I'm sure it didn't work for them. Um, and that might be why uh, maybe they decided to get rid of it, I'm not sure. Uh, when I cut the thread, because this bobbin case was threaded, this is a good place to kind of show you guys again. Anytime you have a thread remnant in your bobbin case, always pull it in the same direction that it was threaded into the case. So I'm going to pull it this way, okay? Don't come here and pull it back because bobbin cases are these wonderful little devices that have springs and levers in them, right? And they don't like thread moving backwards. That's not how they were designed. They don't you will you will irritate your bobbin case and you don't want to do that okay uh, it hasn't been oiled in a while and I've shown you guys in the past there's a way to clean and oil your bobbin case particularly when they've been sitting a long time um, but anyway that's the bobbin case the bobbin case and the little finger design would change singer in some years would have the the little uh, finger at the top of the bobbin case sometimes it's pointing instead of at 11 o'clock it's pointing at uh, one o'clock um, and those variations would you know these are subtle changes you'll know uh, if you have a machine and you're not sure because it's missing the bobbin case you'll you want to go on the internet and research which what the bobbin case looks like for your machine you just pull up an image on Google and that'll tell you whether you have the right one or not um, but anyway this is uh, the setup that Singer had uh, eventually, Singer 15 clones, they would go to a different system. Some of them would use the little, uh, I call them the, they look like pinball flippers, uh, just to make it easier to, re to release um, the cover of the race here. But again, I'm not seeing anything unusual. If you ever have a machine, you get it, and the hand wheel won't turn. One of the things, one of the first places you want to check is down here in the shuttle area. Uh, and if you don't, if you can't see well in here, I don't see a lot of dust on this machine, which is, which is pleasant. It's not common, but pleasant. Um, you can also, uh, when you start taking this area apart, you want to look for thread remnants. Thread has a way of wrapping itself around places and it can interfere or jam your machine. Um, and it's just a matter of digging it out. Let's see, anything else to say? Uh, not, not seeing anything else down here to talk about at the moment. So we'll put it back, back upright. Uh, let's see, this model, did I mention this already? I can't remember. Uh, in addition to its spool pin up top, this machine has its bobbin winding spool pin. These sometimes just go missing. They don't so much break as they just, I don't know why they fall out or who knows. But you can get replacements. I won't, I have a couple of extra in my, my stock. I don't need to here though. Um, what else to look for? Let's look around here on the side, guys, because now we've got our tension dial. When you're looking at your machine, one of the things you want to look for is the check spring. Let me make sure I'm getting a good angle for this. That spring is not the easiest thing to see. See if I can get it to show up for you all. Maybe you see it here, right? So notice I'm just going to push up and it bounces right back. Sometimes if this doesn't happen, your spring might be broken or it might be fine, but it's come it's become dislodged and it's not in the right position. Um, so this again, this is a tension assembly like all of the wonderful singers 
Uh, all the of all the tension assemblies you'll come across, I have found that the Singer vintage tension assemblies are the easiest to disassemble. They are just they are just works of art in terms of quality. Um, and anyway, this one will be it will be getting taken apart um, because uh, I like to clean and uh, inspect them when uh, when I'm doing an overhaul. Now watch, keep your eye right here. Notice that. You notice that this moved when I pulled up on the presser bar lever. That tells me that the pin inside is moving freely. If this doesn't happen, if you don't get any movement here, that typically, it doesn't mean your tension assembly is broke, but it, but it could be gummed up. And the, uh, the pin that allows that movement to happen, which needs to happen, can be stuck. And there are ways to unstick it. So again, uh, just something to look for. Um, not seeing a ton of not seeing a lot of old oil or varnish down here, which is kind of interesting. Um, the light fixture in the back. Uh, let's see. It's uh, there's a there's a bracket that this bolts that holds the light fixture to the body of the machine, and it's sitting behind here. And it might just need tightening because it's a little wobbly, but I I think it's just a matter of the screw not being tight. So. Take a peek here and see what we've got. Overall, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pretty lucky. Let's see. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can tell. And I'm going to get a screwdriver and I'll tighten that. So that's not broken. That's what I wanted to see. Um, that makes me happy. What else do I want to do? While I've got the light fixture here, it might be useful to go ahead. I don't have a bulb in it yet. Right, but I'm checking the switch. The switch moves. It works. It's not broken. It's not breaking off in my hand. Uh, one of the things to know about vintage sewing machine light fixtures, and it doesn't matter whether it's a Singer or any other brand, the traditional incandescent light bulbs get very hot. I've recently uh, started going to the LED bulbs, and uh, I'll, I'll make a video on those. Uh, I didn't think about it till just now, but. Uh, they are um they don't generate near the heat that the incandescents do and that's why i'm going to the leds because uh all of the heat that these bulbs generate you know over the years remember this is 80 years old you know it can be hard on things that are electrical uh, uh and so it's it's nice to to be able to go to a lower temperature bulb what else can i inspect for you guys or take a look at ah I'm going to be looking at the motor separately. I'm not going to open that up today, but um, I did want to talk to you about the cord. Now, this particular machine has what is called a single lead cord. Now, here's the, the Singer. Those of you who know Singers will recognize. That's the Bakelite plug. It's for the three pin terminal, right? So it plugs in like a smiley face. Uh, in this direction. Uh, this is single lead, meaning it has one cord going into it. So this would plug into the machine and on the other end, where's my other end here, is what would go in, what will go into the, uh, the wall, not this particular one because it's, it's a mess, it's going to be replaced. Um, the reason it's called single lead is because you know, it's like, what about the foot pedal? The foot pedal was installed into the machine and, excuse me, the foot pedal was installed into the table and that's fairly common, but instead of being tied to this cord, in which case you would see two cords going into the plug, um, it was wired straight into the terminal. Uh, this was done to, to help camouflage it, I believe, just to give, you know, uh, give the appearance that it was built in, and it was. It was a very nice design. Um, but anyway, this will be getting replaced because uh, I didn't even didn't have to look very closely to see this. This uh, this cord is the original. Okay, so someone went in and they took and they put uh, some kind of tape. I don't know. If this is electrical tape. It looks like some kind of fabric tape. I don't use tape. I don't believe tape is a permanent solution. Uh, and if, but if, as I was inspecting, I was just looking at it, and you can see here where the insulation has literally 
not only has the outside cord insulation gone away, but even the, the, uh, the insulation for the individual wires. And this, <clears throat> this is a recipe for disaster. This is unsafe and uh, it can also short out a motor. So um, I did not get to test this. So I'm going to find out when I put my new cord in, uh, I'll be doing that to make sure that the motor is still good before I overhaul it because that would be unfortunate uh, to put all that work in it and find out it doesn't work. So hopefully, the uh, I believe the owner was being uh, straight up with me when they sold it to me. So uh, I don't know when the last time it was used, but we'll find out. But again, this is something you definitely, you definitely don't want to do. This can either be rewired and use the original plug, or you can simply get a replacement. You can get brand new replacements for these old Singer uh, power cords and uh, foot pedal cords, which I think is wonderful. So this is, again, rubber parts on something this old, very common if they're original to be crumbling or when a piece of it <laughs> went falling. Um, and of course, you know, bobbin tires and things like that. But that's to be expected. You know, that's just, <clears throat> that's going to happen with an old sewing machine that's, you know, that's electrical. So we're going to take care of that. Uh, that's going to be something I, I usually assume is going to be needed. Uh, and again, the bobbin tire is not a surprise. As far as I can tell, nothing is missing. One other thing that I want to kind of go over with you all is, stay put, Court, um, is to, to make sure when you're looking at this that you've got all of your uh, thread guides, right? So if the thread is here, change my angle, it's going to come across. This is your first guide. It's going to come down right it's going to come around it's going to catch the check spring it's going to rest in this little valley right here it's going to come up to the take up arm it's going to come down and it's going to be coming over here there's there's the next thread guide and then we've got one more thread guide right here because this machine threads from the right to the left um, so there's the last thread guide. If you are looking at a machine and it's missing a thread guide, if it's a singer like this, there's a very good chance you can get a replacement. But then that's something you have to do. So be sure to mention that to the owner uh, and say, did you know it was missing a thread guide? Uh, I need to get one. The guys themselves are cheap, but you know, again, it's, it's time and effort that you need to give. So Keep that in mind. But there you go, guys. That is my latest Singer 1591. I think I've done videos. I have to go back and look. I can't even remember. Uh, uh, on prior 1591s that I've worked on. And we'll talk more about the potted motor and why this direct drive motor design, the potted design, was, was um, later replaced, not on this machine, but when the new Slantomatics, like the 400 series, came out. They went to the new direct drive motor design, and uh, I think I know why. I have a theory. If you guys know, let me uh, let me know. You may have heard me yap about it in one of my other videos. But there you go, 1591, the most powerful sewing machine ever created um, for the home for home use, in in my opinion. If you guys know of one that's again a home domestic machine that is um, stronger than this one, let me know. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, folks, and stay tuned for more videos as we go through rehabbing this little powerhouse. Take care.